More on the Olympics and their postponement. Let's uh, turn to Dong Jun. He is the co founder and CEO of EI Asia Limited and a sports commentator here at CGTM. Well, let's talk about uh, Chinese athletes. Uh, you know, they train and they train year in and year out. They dream of the Olympics. Then along comes the coronavirus, it interrupts their training, and now the games bump back a year. Talk to me about the impact on these athletes. Yeah, Mike, uh, when you talk about these athletes, they only represent a small portion of the total number of Chinese athletes, but they are, they, say they, they, they look to be, you know, good enough and lucky enough to represent China to qualify for the Tokyo Games. But now, all these young athletes are, uh, uh, you know, are stunned and shocked, and they, they can't ask anybody, including their own seniors, like coaches and officials, for any answer because the answer is not on any textbook or handbook because this is really unprecedented. But what they can do, or their coaches or our officials are telling them to do, is try to stay healthy and fit to avoid the, uh, those small cases that some of the athletes has already, uh, you know, tested positive for the virus and are staying quarantined right now. So it reminding everybody else to try to be very, very careful and cautious. But at the same time, another learning for the coaches, especially the athletes are, that the voices of athletes are being heard so loud internationally for the IOC, for the Japan organizer, organizers to decide when and whether and when to hold the Olympics because the athletes uh, safety and health are the top priority, although this is already emphasized by the Chinese leader over the last few weeks. The athletes, the Chinese athletes now, culturally a little bit unfamiliar with this, are being reminded that their own, you know, concerns, their own voices are indeed the top priority when deciding about the Olympics. As it should be, uh, naturally. Tokyo, of course, will get the Games next year, and then China will host the Olympics a year later. And, you know, it used to be you prepare for the Olympics, you do this, you do that, but now all of a sudden, I, I think this has entered the equation. You know, what do you do in the case of a pandemic, that sort of thing? How do you think this has changed how China, you know, prepares for the 2022 Games? Well, I think it's an advantage for China to, to cope with such challenges, which is, you know, unknown to um, almost every country. I think China has a relatively more centralized system. It can move around its uh, resources more easily and more efficiently. But even for such a country and for Beijing, with experience of, of successfully hosting the Summer Olympics, the Winter Olympics is a completely different thing. It's even more technically challenging, and you have to ad adapt your timetable to the weather and other conditions. China still relies so much on those experienced and more resourceful countries in Europe and North America to put together the 2022 Winter Games. And the timetable was already tight, even without the, the virus outbreak, but now Beijing's own agenda is already disrupt, you know, uh, interrupted, you know, if not disrupted. It has already canceled some trips, exchange trips, uh, with the cooperating uh, parties outside of China. But now, with the 2020 Summer Games moved to 2021, it means that the IOC, the International Olympic Communities, and the, and the, the, uh, the Japan and, and China organizers are running on even tighter schedules because it's the same IOC people need to run between Japan and China to coordinate two Olympics now being so close to be within just a month. So it's a big challenge, but China is now trying to stay calm and trying to catch up with those weeks already lost on their, on their agenda and at the same time trying to arrange the winter Chinese athletes to stay in basic training if still without being able to restore, resume those regular competitive trainings. Yeah, you know, here in the United States, uh, in Europe, uh, you open up the sports page, there's nothing there. I mean, it's like a page, if that. Uh, and, I, and I have to ask about China, because obviously lots of sports fans there, uh, and, and the Olympics is just one phase of, of the sports competition in China. How is it impacting uh, sports in China? Actually, Chinese sports have been booming, I mean, business-wise, for five to six years, but 2019 turned out to be a bit challenged because 
all those startup companies are already reporting shortage of cash at the end of 2019. But this year's challenge, because of the the outbreak, is even more devastating. So I think it's, it's, it's indeed a big challenge, although individually for each person who try to keep up their workout at home may be less hard hit than those uh, big competitions involving gatherings and very, you know, near, uh, social contact. But now I, I think it's, in, it's for the entire business to adapt to because uh, those business can, cannot carry on anymore, many of them. And at the same time, people need to work out. When, when you stay home, you still rely on the entertainment values of your star planes still performing on the other side of the TV, uh, you know, live cast. So without them practicing and playing against one another, because we learned, for example, the Chinese Basketball Association are running short of foreign players, many of them from America now, and without knowing exactly what their next timetable are. So when you turn on the TV, you expect to watch entertaining and even inspiring football, uh, basketball and sports matches, you don't see them. Mm. This is a big challenge. Yeah. Thanks so much for your insights. Really appreciate it.